Rogers. I am a content editor at the Record Searchlight, and I lead the 530 Media Project, which is something that the Record Searchlight launched about a year ago in partnership with Pacific Sky Marketing and now the Shasta County Arts Council. So we're providing free workshops. Well, not free anymore. Actually, it's a $10 donation to the Shasta Regional Community Foundation. But we're providing these workshops to the community so we can teach you social media skills, digital media, media skills, and we'll be offering classes on Excel, uh, Google Drive, and other workshops. We're also interested in workshops that you may um, want to take, but they're not listed on our site currently. Let us know. I have a form that I passed out to everybody. So you can fill that out. We want to know if we're doing a good job, if we're meeting your expectations, and then we want to know what kind of classes you'd like to see in the future so we can add that to our lineup. So um, welcome, and um, I'll get started on our workshop on citizen journalism. Okay, uh, citizen journalism, we're sharing the, stu the stories of our community. So what is citizen journalism, you might ask? It's the collection, dissemination, and analysis of news and information by the general public, especially by means of the internet. So it's also known as participatory journalism, public journalism, democratic journalism, guerrilla journalism, and street journalism. Now in my PowerPoint, I have links to reading material if you'd like to read more about it. And um, on the sheet that I handed out, if you'd like a copy of this, um, of this presentation, I can email it to you. I can email you a link. Then you'll be able to click on the links and learn more. So how does citizen journalism work? Um, it's people without professional journalism training using the tools of modern technology and the global distribution of the internet to create content and collaborate with others to report on their communities. So I'm wondering, are there any examples of, from the class of people who are currently doing practicing citizen journalism and what platforms are you using? I'm trying. I'm uh -huh. supposed to be the public affairs officer for the Civil Air Patrol, and I have no background. Okay. <laughs> and so I have written a couple of blog articles and submitted it to the records. The records are slight. Okay. So you're leaning on traditional journalism to pass on. Right. Okay. But so <laughs> they would like me to learn how to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working with a group. We have uh, a number of uh, forums and presentations mm -hmm. over the last two years. We have one coming up, a uh, solar panel that we have a client. So we need to get up how to do it. And that's been a lot of good learning experience. Okay. All right. Well, this workshop should help you then. Um, so I'm going to talk about ways you can share information with the Record Search Light but also empower you to share it um, on your own on a number of distribution channels. So um, we'll go on with the PowerPoint here. So just first to cover the basics, as, as a citizen journalist, you're gonna wanna know the basics of what every journalist knows, and that's when you're writing a story, you wanna cover the who, what, where, when, why, and how. It's kind of difficult to see my example, but um, I can read it here. It's, it's, the story starts off with a 49-year-old man was hit and had several well, I can barely read it. Um, several times with a rock, oh, he was hit several times with a rock at South City Park on Thursday evening, and police are looking for the man who did it. So right there in the beginning, we're covering uh, who, a 40-year-old man, what, hit in the head, where, South City Park, when, Thursday evening, why, it's unknown at this time, so it's not stated, and then how, with a rock. So that's called a lead, the first paragraph of your um, story is called a lead and you want to cover the who, what, where, why, when, and how in your story. And also, you see the inver inverted pyramid here, you want to write an inverted pyramid style, which means the lead comes at the beginning, usually uh, containing the who, what, where, why, when, and how, the article. The body follows that, which contains facts and further information, most of which is necessary um, and revealed in order of importance. And then finally, at the end, is um, fluffy stuff or little of little importance taking into, and I can barely read this, um, basically it, it's stuff that you can cut off at the end. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> so it, it, it's stuff that can be cut, if it, and this is for print, because an editor might have to cut um, your story uh, for space considerations, so you want the stuff at the bottom to be something that can be cut out. Okay, and then we're covering um, publishing platforms, of course websites, um, there's a number of blogging platforms, which I will cover, social networks, um, so you're familiar with those. That would be Storify, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, 
um, Instagram, there are a number of social networks, and then another publishing platform would be Storify, and I'll show you an example of that. But basically, it allows you to aggregate content um, from the crowd, so people who are in the scene of some breaking news story and they're posting on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you can curate their posts, and then you can write along with it and pulling in their, their content to tell the story. And then Rebel Mouse is also a news curation tool, and it does the same sort of thing. It pulls in tweets, um, Facebook posts, anything that's on social media. You can do that through um, a, a, someone's Twitter handle. You can do that through a hashtag. So, for instance, when Merle Haggard died, um, well, actually, we used another tool, which I'll cover in here, called Scribble Live. But Rebel Mouse, you can do the same thing. You can create a hashtag. We did M Merle Haggard Memories. And then we pulled in every every tweet that was um, you you know that stated it had that hashtag in it. It, it automatically pulled it in, and uh, I'll show you examples and you'll see how how nice it looks. But it allows you to also live blog as well, so you can live blog um, the coverage of the Merle Haggard um, funeral, for example, and then pull in other people who might be tweeting from it and that kind of thing. And then um, of course there's always sharing content with traditional media. I work at the Record Searchlight and we appreci appreciate that. We have something called Your News, where we ask the community to turn in articles. We publish that on Sunday in a section called Your News. Um, and then we also uh, welcome photos for our, our scene page and, and other, other forms of media, our, our um, Get Out section as well. We look for photos for that. So I'll start with how you can share your content with the record searchlight. Um, we, as I mentioned, we have a Your News section. And then I have a link in this presentation to the instructions. But basically, we're looking for a 250 to 600 word article, a photo in JPEG format, um, raw video, less than two minutes. And then, um, or you could provide links to a YouTube video, maybe you created to complement your story, background information or material referenced. Um, we also welcome audio files, so if you created a SoundCloud, uh, which I'll cover in this presentation how to do that, and photo slide tools photo slideshows. And then um, I'm the one who puts that uh, content together, so you just email it to me at michelle.rogers at writing.com. Then we also, of course, welcome letters to the editor, so that's how you can share your content with the record searchlight. And again, there's a link to the instructions, but basically all letters are subject to editing and must include the author's first and last name, current town of residence, and a daytime phone number. Standard letters are 250 words. Then we have a 50 word um, dash which is 50 words or fewer, and speak your piece is 600 to 700 words. And you would just email that to letters at reading.com, or you can mail it in, but of course we prefer emails, we can do a copy and paste. Okay, and then I think this is the last one, sharing with the record searchlight, you can also share to our date magazine or in our online calendar. So again, there's a link here to the instructions. So for date, you're just going to fill out the form on the right side of our entertainment page online. And I have a link directly to that. So if you're in our PowerPoint and trying to um, upload your information, you can do that directly through this link. You submit events at, at, least, um, at least three weeks in advance. Events fitting dates, theme, and submitted early are usually included the week of the event and sometimes sooner if there's space. Then we have a phone number here where you can call. Um, one of our assistants for help, and she'll help you directly walk you through the process if you're having trouble. So check that out um, if you're interested in sharing your community events. Any questions so far about sharing with the Record Search Light? When we go on to this link, can we print out your PowerPoint? Yes, you can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now I'm going to cover the tools of a, of a citizen journalist. So, um, of course, a smartphone. Um, is the most handy tool that I use all the time, and so do our journalists. A tablet, such as an, I, um, an iPad and a laptop computer. Of course, a desktop computer works as well, but if you want to be mobile, those um, three things have worked the best. And then um, you'll need a website, a blogging platform, or your preferred social media network to actually publish your work on. Then some apps that I recommend, um, they're here and they're linked, so if you've never heard of them, you can at least click on the links and then check them out. So I'm sure many of you have heard of Twitter. It's a microblogging site, which you can now do 30 second video. You can also use Periscope, which I've mentioned here as well, which is a live streaming site, which will then push out your live stream video on Twitter. So they're, they're connected. Facebook um, as well, you're probably familiar with that. And they just rolled out live streaming as well. So you can do live streaming video on Facebook if you have a page. 
Um, I believe you, you can do it on your personal account as well, but of course if you're with an organization or a business and you want to live stream using Facebook, you can do that. Uh, Google Plus is out there. I'm not very active on it. And most people, I think, use it just to increase their SEO, which is their search engine optimization, um, so they can get listed higher in search rankings. Um, WordPress is a blogging platform, and that's my preferred blogging platform. Other people um, have their preferences. Blogspot is another popular one. And again, because it is a Google project, uh, product, it will get you higher up in the search rankings. So a lot of people use that for SEO value. But I find WordPress to be very easy, um, it's intuitive. Um, but I've, I've used Blogger as well, or Blogspot, whichever, it goes by both names. Um, and then Google Drive, has anyone her, here heard or used Google Drive? Okay. <coughs> okay, I really like that platform. That's where I've created this presentation. It allows you to embed your presentation on your website or blog. So for example, um, one of our reporters is working on a story tonight where uh, Rachel Hatch put out the call for, it was hashtag what if Reading, and she asked people, you know, imagine what Reading could be, what if Reading, and then people tweeted using that hashtag and posted on Facebook. She, she gathered all those posts, and then I used Google Drive presentations to put them on slides, and I have it on a slide presentation that will be embedded her, in her story. So that helps us tell the story, tell people what the audience, you know, it's, it's called crowdsourcing when you bring in what the crowd is saying about a particular topic. Okay, LinkedIn is another publishing platform. So you can now directly blog, um, blog directly to LinkedIn and that attaches to your profile. It leaves up to three, I've got some on there. I can show you some examples. Uh, but also it's great for sharing articles. So maybe you post, post something on your blog or you have an article in the paper you can um, share it on LinkedIn. Then um, SoundCloud is um, it's an audio um, <coughs> for audio casting. So I'll show show you some examples. But for for example, if you are not comfortable as a writer and you're better as a speaker and you want to um, speak or you want to interview someone and you'd rather put that up without writing an article, this allows you to do it through an audio cast, and you can embed that in your website or um, on your blog. And then um, Pinterest, that is for people who are really into photography and the demographic is mostly women um, and then like um, <coughs> weddings and fashion and that kind of thing. So it's really a niche market there. <coughs> Google Voice, um, I'm using that tool currently for a project I'm working on for Mother's Day. So I'm asking people to call my Google Voice number, leave a message um, about their mother, why their mother is amazing or a favorite memory and then send me photos, and then I'm going to share that, I'm going to put that together um, in a video, we call it a sound slideshow, because it incorporates audio, so it's their messages, which is left in MP3 format, which is a digital, it's an um, audio file, and then I can overlay the photos on top of it, and I'll show you examples. Okay, Ustream is another live streaming video service that I can show you. Um, Dropbox is just, if someone wanted to share a lot of photos with you, you can um, set up a Dropbox and they can um, send them directly there. They can also do that in Google Drive and other, and other ways to all, other ways as well. Then we have Instagram. Again, that's for um, photos. Um, that's really popular with the, the younger generation, millennials. Canva is a tool where you can create um, presentations, memes, and other graphic graphics. And I'll show you an example. And then Scribble Live is what I mentioned earlier. It allows you to curate um, tweets, Facebook posts, Instagram posts from the crowd. It allows you to, people to directly um, type in a chat box and their words will appear within your story um, as you're covering something live. You can be live streaming video at the same time that you're bringing in their comments. So again, I'll show you examples, but I just wanted to give you an overview of what all those tools are. And then these are hyperlinked, so you can go there and check them all out. Okay, so I, I mentioned all of these. So these are the popular social networking sites that you may want to check out and where you can share your content, depending on the audience you're trying to reach. So Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Instagram. Um, check them all out. Um, I often just check out a tool, I set up an account, and I explore and see if it's going to meet my, um, my needs.
Okay, so I'll dive in a little deeper on each tool. Um, so here's a closer look at Facebook. How many people here have Facebook accounts? Yeah, just about everybody. Okay. So do you know the difference between a page and a group? No. Facebook page and a group. Okay. So I'll explain. So a page um, is often, well, there's an individual profile, which you have to have first before you can start a page or a group. And then from there, you can become an administrator. So let's say I am a business owner, and I want to, then I want to start a page. I don't want to set up an individual profile for a business or a nonprofit. You want it to be a page. So um, it's for businesses, brands, and organizations so they can share their stories and connect with an audience. People like the page rather than send you a friend request like you do with an individual account. And then um, it goes into their news feed, um, depending on the algorithm that Facebook has. Um, and how they dish it up. If you want to interact more with the page, let's say you have a favorite business that you'd like to see more of their content, my recommendation is to interact with it, like it, um, comment on it, and then Facebook will recognize that as something that you uh, want to engage with. And then also, if you go to their page, there's an area, and I can show you later, where you can say um, you want it as first notifications, so that way Facebook understands that you want to receive their notifications. Yes? When, so a page is like, Business. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when when you go in Facebook and you get like in your shows up in your news feed and it's got so and so likes this or it shows up a business or an organization or something and you click like, is that what we're clicking on a page somebody created? Yeah, you're and you're liking their post. I'm liking their yeah, yeah, you're liking their not page. Not just their post, but their page. Yeah, you want to like their page okay. first. That's that way um, you'll get the notifications mm -hmm. in your news feed. Okay, and then a group um, is something where you engage with people on a topic. So, uh, for example, Reading has probably a dozen or more crime groups. So, it's, they're all focused on crime, and you can get in there, and people are posting what they're seeing in terms of crime in their neighborhood. I'm posting articles that we're running in the record searchlight about crimes that are happening. So, it's people who want to be vigilant and stay on top of um, what's going on in their community in terms of crime. So that's a group. They're all commenting, they're all rallying there in the group. That's different from a page. So like a page, if you comment, you can only comment on that business or nonprofit or what the, the owner of the page on their post. You cannot just comment and it, it's there on the middle of your page. It goes off to the left-hand side. Um, with, whereas with a group, you're going to see your comments right in the middle and discussion taking place. So it's more of like a group is a discussion. So it's a dedicated space where you can share updates, photos, documents, and message, message other group members. So it's, a, it's very interactive. So here, again, I have links um, where you can find out the difference. This is a link to Facebook explaining the exact difference. Here are some, just some examples just to show you. So personal would be, for example, this is my, it's actually my professional page. So I make sure I've got um, a background photo that identifies myself as a journalist right away. But this is your uh, personal page as opposed to here's an example of a group so uh, this is a group I created you know you're from Reading if and this allows people I, I have a post at the very top here which I tagged at the top so people see it's a, like a welcome and it kind of explains what the group's all about and then underneath anyone can post you'll see I've got many posts because I try to I try to um, get people to discuss discuss issues and that kind of thing and then and then people can comment underneath, but anyone can post here. So hopefully I'll come across someone other than myself here posting. But that's the idea is um, to sort of, there we go, Judith got one on here. So to just start a discussion on various topics um, that people in Reading might be interested in. And then as you can see, a lot of discussions are taking place and they're all on the center of the page. Okay. And then a page, here's an example. The record searchlight has a Facebook page. So we post our content here. It shows up in the center section as soon as it comes in. A little bit of a delight here. So we're offering posting, we're posting our articles. Um, and then we can see, as an administrator, I can see how many people the post has reached so far. Um, and then people can comment under the post, they can share it. They can share it on, with their friends and family on Facebook. They can like it. Um, 
And then if someone was just a post on our page, it ends up over here. See how it's kind of hidden? And that's the, the difference. It's um, difference from a group is that it's not like the group is more engaging because you see it in the center. But again, it's for different reasons. A page is mostly for a business to put out what it's promoting and for a nonprofit. And then the groups are, for, are more discussion oriented. Okay, so any questions regarding the difference between a Facebook group and a page? Hi, um, okay, Twitter. Uh, how many people here on Twitter? Okay, yeah, it's just a couple. <laughs> so I really want people ready to get on Twitter. Like the rest of the world is on Twitter. We gotta get on Twitter here. Um, so Twitter is the place where news breaks first today. So if you want to be in the know, what's going on, you know? <laughs> Get on Twitter because it breaks there before you hear it on the radio, before you see it on CNN. It's going to be on Twitter. So um, you can get your live coverage from there. You can use hashtags and mentions. You can curate, um, like I mentioned, through Scribble Live and other platforms. Um, so this is you sharing your news on Twitter. Um, you can share photos. You can share video. It's 30-second video. Um, and now they have the live streaming in um, partnership with Periscope. So you can live stream an event. So for example, last week I was in Southern California vacationing and I live um, streamed on Periscope a sunset at the beach. So that was fun. And people comment, when you're using Periscope, you can see their comments come up, they can hear you, so we we'll talk to them live as they ask questions. They, um, they can send out hearts when they tap on the screen to show that they're, they appreciate what you're doing, that kind of thing. So let's see, I have a link to example here. Um, oh, that would have been from a long time ago. Okay, that was when I was gonna. But here's a link to Twitter how to. Oh, I was just showing you here an example of on Twitter, which you're probably familiar with. Um, if not, please do get familiar. It's a great avenue to share your work. So like we were setting up for this workshop, I shared our photos and I, I mentioned the 530 Media Project, which is on Twitter as well. And so we were setting up, um, I promote our workshops here, I promote local content, um, local news stories, that kind of thing. So if you have a business or if you're involved in a service club or, or whatever it may be, um, even if you're just in, interested in, in um, sports news, for example, uh, you can follow your favorite sports team on Twitter. They're they're on Twitter. Your fa your favorite celebrity. Um, it's everybody is on Twitter. So I'd encourage you to to use that tool. Okay. Um, here's a closer look at Periscope. So I mentioned how you can live stream. Like I live stream the sunset. Um, live streaming video for uh, in real time um, using your smartphone app. So you can do breaking news. So for our reporters, we're live streaming fires, car crashes, protests. Melees and more. Uh, we're doing live interviews, live events, uh, festivals, <coughs> car shows. This is stuff you could be doing. So if you're a citizen journalism in your community, um, you've got your own blog or website, you can do all this using this app as well. So um, you know, we just had cool April nights. That would have been a great, a great thing to um, live stream on Periscope. <coughs> the um, the they drive through town, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Um, and then let's see, what do I have here? Change settings to stay live stream. Oh, these are just some tips. If you're going to use Periscope, here are some tips to know. For example, um, initially when you set it up, I don't think it's going to save to your camera roll. So if you want to save that video for later, you're going to want to make sure that you change your settings because otherwise, on Periscope, we'll only keep it for 24 hours. So your live streaming video is only available to the public for 24 hours. So save it to your camera roll on your phone. And there, that way, you'll have it. And you can use it, you can upload it to YouTube, and you can embed it on your site. <coughs> okay, um, Ustream is another live streaming service. So I've used this a lot um, with our workshops. We've used it also, the Record Searchlight, for live streaming chats with um, fire chief and police chief and other um, officials. So um, you would just go to Ustream. I've got a link here. Again, if you have this PowerPoint at home, just click on the link and um, you can set it up. It's very easy to set up. So you can download video, your video later and upload it to YouTube for storage and sharing. Oh, also, I didn't mention, but the majority of these tools, I think all about 99%, there might be just one tool 
um, that isn't free, but the most are free. So you can use Ustream for free, but you have limited ability. If you pay, you have more ability, but things I'm showing you here, you can get for free with it, and the limited um, ability is just fine. It works out fine. So you can um, do analytics, um, and you can embed it in a Scribble Live chat and freeze it at the top with some text um, underneath. So I'll show you some examples. See, I think I already logged in so I could show you this one. So right here. Okay, so this is what it looks like once you would set up your profile, which is just your, basically your email and a password. And it's as easy as you hit the go live button and you're using the basics. I'm, I'm going to remain basic. They always ask you that. And it's going to bring you to a dashboard. Um, it saves all your videos here. This is, the dashboard is where you can get your videos and download them for later. Um, basically, I just hit the start broadcast button. See how it's, it's um, videoing me right now? So start broadcast will make it live, but I also want to start recording so I will have it for later. So that way I can upload it to my YouTube channel. So that's all you need to do, really, to start broadcasting. And then you go to your dashboard. And that's where you're going to find your video later, which you can download. So there's also an embed code. So for example, if you're live streaming, of course, how are people going to see it except for on Ustream? Well, you can embed it on your um, blog or website. So you would just get the embed code right here. And it's going to be the same embed code as long as you're sticking to the same player and everything. So, um, so what exactly does embed mean? Does it mean oh. you? and just transfer it to the other? Or? Yeah, it's going to give you some coding, so you just copy and paste what they call the embed code and put it on your blog, for example. Usually there's a button like called source or something like that that you're going to press first. Um, it just depends on the platform you're using to publish it. So you would choose like your player. Great embed. So I just click on that. And you're going to see the um, code right here. It's an iframe code. So that's what I'm going to paste into. Like if I'm done, um, I'm on WordPress. I just paste it and it appears. Now, can you paste that to Facebook? Uh, I don't think so. No. You could try, but I don't think it will. Because Facebook has its own live streaming now, so I doubt they're going to want other people <laughs> doing it. So, um, but this will hurt to try. Okay. So. But it's got that icon up there for Facebook. What was that? It has the icon up there for Facebook. Uh, it did? Oh, that, I think that was from some so, social stream. See what it does. You have uh, social media, free media, Facebook. Where are you looking? Oh, no, these are just my tabs. That's just my tabs on my browser. Yeah, it's not related to Ustream. All right. So, where were I? Let's see. Okay, so we covered Ustream. Any questions about Ustream? It's very easy to use. You need a free account. You can embed it and live stream. But, like I said, Facebook and Periscope has made it real easy now, too. So, you don't even, you know, it's depending on what you want to do. If you're a free spirit, if you're on your mobile phone, your mobile device, that makes it very easy to live stream using Periscope and Facebook. Michelle? Yes. So I will say video and upload it to YouTube. How is that more complicated than Ustream? Well, Ustream is live. Okay. Yeah, so you can be like at the scene of a fire, get on Periscope. That would be the easiest thing on your mobile phone and live stream it. years um, is Google Voice. So I have Google Voice on my phone. So not only do I have like a phone number <coughs> dialer that's associated with my phone, but I could downloaded the app for Google Voice. It gives me a whole different um, dialer and a new phone.
phone number. I get to pick my phone number. And that way I can give that number out to people I don't know or don't want them to know who I am. They call that number and then um, I usually give it out for projects like this. So I mentioned earlier how I was doing one for Mother's Day. I also did one for Valentine's Day that you may have seen, so I'll show you that. Basically, it's free. Um, anyone can get it and download it on your phone. Uh, you choose your own phone number. It will email you the message as well. It tries to translate it, but it's not quite the same. Um, it will text you a message as well if you're interested in that. But the key here as a citizen journalist is that it will create an MP3 file of the recording that can be embedded on your publishing platform or in a video and sound, um, sound slideshow. So here's an example. I put this, I put together um, and uploaded it to YouTube. I just edited it using iMovie. I used Canva to create that. My husband's name is Albert Sanchez and we live in Reading. So and very quickly, um, I went back to school in my 40s. In the classes. However, classes. while waiting for it. So she told her story, and then, you know, they, I sat up to two minutes, I think. And then. Um, in the fall of 1994, another one. I think an ad in the record search was personal. So. That yeah, was really so. nice, Michelle. As um, two yeah. students at the state. We both got involved with the ballroom dance program through friends and acquaintances. And anyway, kind of cool. It's a way to crowdsource a story, you know, um, and it's a, a different sort of publishing platform. Let me get rid of some of this here. Okay. So now you have that on Google Voice. How do you get people to see it and spread the word? Okay. So um, I had them call the Google Voice phone number. That's where I downloaded their MP3s. I put it together in iMovie, and then I uploaded it to YouTube. So then I shared the link that's on YouTube on all my social platforms. We also published it on Reading.com. So if you go to Reading.com, it, it looks like a story. It's in a story format. And then you just push the, um, you know, the player on YouTube, the play button, and you, and you can watch it. Yeah, so you can do that on a blog or another site, too. Okay, um, a closer look at Google Plus. I'm just going to breeze through this one. Uh, social networking site connected to other Google products, so Gmail, Google Drive, Google Search, has Hangouts, which I actually just experimented with today. I'm going to be um, chiming in on a journalism class at LSU on, on a panel, and we're, all, we're doing it in Google Hangouts. So I was testing it today, and it was pretty easy. It's like Skype or any other, you know, live video. Um, and then they have uh, Google Plus Circles. So it's like Facebook, um, not as many people on Google Plus, though, as on Facebook. So it just depends on where you want to spend your time. All right. Um, closer look at SoundCloud. So um, I talked about this a little earlier. This is for audio. So you can do audio recordings um, that can be embedded in stories, uh, sound slideshows, like I just showed you, and publishing platforms, or they can be linked to your own channel. So I can share a link directly from SoundCloud or I can embed it on my blog and share a link to that post on my blog. So I think I have an example. Oh, I'm going to take it in my channel. That's what I was going to do. All right, so let's see here. Um, okay, so I was doing, um, this is when I was in Michigan. Our executive editor was retiring, so I was interviewing people about his 30-year career. So um, all you have to do is hit the upload button here, so you can... You can meet with somebody in person, use your voice memo on your phone, okay, to record the conversation, and then you um, you can put it, you know, in a full, you can email it to yourself or use Dropbox or another tool to get it to your computer, and then once it's on your computer, you can upload it. SoundCloud doesn't have it, so you can upload directly through an app, unfortunately. Um, I think they stopped doing that like they used to, but they don't anymore, so you have to get it to your computer somehow. So once you do, you just hit the upload button, and once you do that, it goes right up. And then here's an example. Michelle Rogers here with Stephen Fry, the online editor at the Oakland Press. And we're here to talk about Glenn Gilbert's retirement and his legacy. So, so you've, you've worked with Glenn since 2006? Yes. Okay. And over these years, um, and everything that you've seen, and the transition, and everything like that, um, what do you think will be Glenn's legacy? I believe Glenn Gilbert's legacy will be guiding 
the newsroom at the Oakland Press, as well as the newsrooms throughout Michigan, through a, a difficult period of transition. Both uh, it was an unstable time in the industry as well as the economy, and also journalism in general changing with the the new digital tools available. That's just an example. So pretty cool tool. Pinterest? Anyone here on Pinterest? Okay. If you're into photos, um, it's a social networking site where photos, memes, videos, PDFs, data visualizations, and other forms of art are shared, um, commented on, and organized through boards. So, um, let's see what example I have. I'm not sure if I did record search light on my own. Okay, this is a record search light. It's on Pinterest. So, if you're on Pinterest, get on Pinterest. Feel free to follow us. Well, I'm not logged in, so it's not going to give me a great view. But as you can see, we have like we share cool April nights photos on here. We have our pets of the week on here. Um, when Meryl Haggard died, we have photos from our archives on here. So it allows you to interact with the photos. You can repin them to your own site and that kind of thing. So, um, so another publishing tool for you to consider. Okay, Dropbox, that's just a means of like sharing documents. So it's used for storing files, uh, text, photos, video, PDFs, and sharing on other devices. So for example, I have Dropbox on my phone and allowed me to like drop, like usually a video file is really big and you can't email it to yourself. So you can just put it in your Dropbox on your phone and then go to your laptop or your desktop and then there it is, it's for, there for you. So it's a great tool. And then you can also share folders with people so they can drop something in your Dropbox and you'll get it on any device that you have it um, on. So that's um, a good one. Um, so you can share access to folders with others and then you, like I said, remote and des desktop access. Another tool, Instagram. Anyone here on Instagram? Okay, not a lot of photography curious. Uh, social, it's a social network uh, primarily used for sharing photos. You can stream um, channel onto your own publishing platform. So for example, I have a blog and I have my Instagram streaming in. So anytime a new Instagram post, um, every, anytime I post to Instagram, it appears on my blog. It's just on that. So you can feed it into your blog. So that way you're keeping your blog fresh with new content um, from a variety of platforms. Here's an example of the record Searchlight is on Instagram. You'll see a lot of our photographers' photos. Um, and then you can interact because it's a social site. You can comment on them. You can share them. There is an app that allows you to repost other people's photos. So here's one. I'm in charge of this channel as well. This is a repost I saw from Cool April Night, so I reposted it to our site. Google Drive, I mentioned this earlier, um, that's where I created this presentation. I do all my presentations in Google Drive because then I can embed it on our blog. So it's a free tool with um, Gmail and allows you to collaborate in the cloud. Um, so that allows you, let's say if you're working on an article and you want someone to edit it, it allows you to both from any location be in that article at the same time and you'll see that person making changes from wherever, they can be in another country and making changes you're going to see it live. So it allows you to share that and collaborate in the cloud. You can also share photos and presentations, polls, surveys. Um, you can embed all that stuff as well. So for example, I linked to our instructions of how to share a letter to the editor and that was created in Google Drive. And so you're going to click right on my document that is inside my Google Drive and you're going to look at it. So you can give people the ability to just look at it. You can give them the ability to edit it or um, and then share it. So it's a cool tool. And, I, and I've taught workshops on that. If you're interested in a workshop in the future on that, let me know on that survey that I handed out. So um, polls and surveys. I use this a lot just to interact again with our audience. I'll create a poll. We did one. I helped the, um, the, I can't remember the name of the group, but it's the group that's involved with the Eagles, Liberty and Spirit. Okay, I helped them create a poll and name the baby Eagles. <laughs> So, um, and then they, they circulated that on Facebook and their social channels. Let me see. I have an example. I'm not sure where it's going to lead me. Oh, okay, here. We, when the Mount Shasta Mall announced about a year or so ago that it was getting new ownership, we wanted to know what our readers um, would be interested in seeing there in terms of changes, new stores maybe. So, 
at the bottom, there's my poll. So you can see how it's embedded right in there with the story. So like as you as a citizen journalist can do the same thing. You can have your post and then embed a uh, survey or poll at the bottom just to interact with your audience there. So here we asked to uh, tell the new ownership of the Shasta Mall, and then we gave it some choices. But you can set up a poll or survey any way you want, multiple choice, um, write in, so you know, however you want to design it. And again, I can teach that class again. But a lot of these workshops that I'm teaching, you can also just go on YouTube and uh, search tutorial on whatever. So a tutorial on Google Drive, something will come up. People are teaching this. Um, I often show videos, um, did a, some basic videos, LinkedIn basics, that kind of thing. I go on uh, YouTube and look for them, and sometimes I embed them in my presentations. So yeah, if you're looking for extra help, go to YouTube. Okay, LinkedIn, um, again, it's a professional uh, social networking site, so you're not going to share on here your personal stuff. This is more business-oriented. So um, I share my 530 Media Project stuff on here because, you know, um, it's got a lot of tools that marketers are interested in, marketing people are on LinkedIn, and professionals are on LinkedIn. So, for example, when we were written about in Media Life magazine, it's a national magazine, they wrote about the 530 Media Project, and um, so I shared that post on LinkedIn. So just be careful, be selective of what you share on LinkedIn because it's meant for business professionals. But you'll have your own LinkedIn profile, which gives your educational background, your career, um, all of that, and that's where you're going to share more professional, business-related news. So again, people can, um, you can blog on it, you can post photos, you can post links, updates, um, then you can interact with people, you can like, comment, share, that kind of thing. Um, there's an example if you want to check it out here. Okay, I mentioned Scribble Live as well. This is a tool. Now, this is the only one I think in my presentation that costs any money, and I don't even know how much, but um, we have it at the newspaper. And it's a really uh, cool tool. It allows you um, to engage and interact with your audience. So it's in a live blogging format, um, and then you curate via Twitter handles or hashtags, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Flickr, and you can moderate direct posts. So when I say curate, I mean that you, like basically if someone sends a, a, a tweet out, you incorporate that tweet in your publication. So I think I have an example here, so you can see what I'm saying. So this is a live chat we had with Jonathan Anderson of the Good News Rescue Mission. So we had a story here kind of explaining what we were doing with him. And then this is Scribble Live, you're seeing, the, this was the after the video. So we uploaded our video later to YouTube, so you can watch that now. But while it was going live, this is what it looked like. This was this is Ustream, which is embedded in the Scribble Live, so people could watch live. At the same time, they could tweet about it if they use this hashtag Ready Mission. It came in automatically. We didn't have to do anything. It just pulls in these uh, tweets using this hashtag. So we told Scribble Live which hashtag, so it knew. So here we're getting um, you know some audience feedback. We're posting as well, and then. This is me writing, I can write as an administrator, I can write directly in Scribble Live, so that makes it so it's a longer post than a tweet, because in, in Twitter you're limited to so many characters. So there you can see I could write a little longer. And then people from our audience, I'm not seeing, but people from home who are not on Twitter can contribute as well, because it brings up a chat box which allows them on our website to write a comment directly. So anyone can use this tool. Oh, here's an example. So Betty, must have been on her computer at home, um, got into the chat box, and then just wrote this question in. So then we relayed those questions to uh, Jonathan Anderson. So that's kind of what that looks like. Let's see, send these links again. All right, Canva, this is a new tool that I love and use all the time now. So um, it's an online graphic design platform offering free access to a wide assortment of design tools and options. So it allows you to design presentations, social media graphics, and layouts. Um, it offers millions of images. Some are free, but a lot are like a dollar. But I just use the free ones, so it's your choice. But I, You can also upload your own image, so you don't have to use certain images. But I'll, I'll show you an example. 
Um, you can download the image and then upload it directly to your social media channels. Um, so it boasts 9.2 million users currently. So here's an example. I often make, we often use a tool to promote our workshops. So if you're on Facebook and you're following me or the 530 Media Project, you've probably seen some of my stuff. So I made this in Canva and it took me like two minutes to do. It's really fast and easy, intuitive. Um, and I will log in so you can see. I thought it was open, but I'm not. Maybe not. So it's just canva.com. I'm already logged in. You can connect directly through your Facebook or Twitter account, or you can go ahead and set it up with your email. So once you get here, you get these templates to choose from. I often use the uh, social media template. So just to give you an idea, I'll click on it and show you how easy it is. So, oh, actually, I use the Facebook one. You can do. You saw my Facebook cover um, photo that I made it here too. They have a template for that. Actually, I want to go back. I want to use. Go back. They have one specifically for Facebook. Examples I made here. So there's the Mother's Day tribute. So I created that where I was trying to get people to call my Google Voice number, which I put right here. Uh, there's my Twitter Basics one. Um, I did one for the Women's Fund here. Here's our Facebook groups. That I was just showing some of the example of how to do it. So um, it's very easy to do. I'm looking for my Facebook template. They're usually all at the top, but I think because of the PowerPoint and using this. Um, this, um, it's not showing it, so I'll just click on this to show you. Okay, so here's your template, and then you can just um, choose like a background, you click on background, it will give you some options here, and see how it says free, um, and then some will say like a dollar, but A little wonky because of this. My computer is hooked up to this machine. It's not allowing me to do some certain things here. Um, let's just look. Free photos here. Let's say I use this photo. Pulls it in. I can make it larger. I can make it fill the whole box if I wanted. So I can put some type on it. Um, just click on text, headline, and I can move it here. Is that like on a bus? It looks I like it. Yeah, I, don't, I just clicked on some random image. So, you know, let's just say. And then I can change the color if I want. Make it white. I can change the point size. But, you know, that, so it allows you to create memes and that kind of thing. You can do a meme here or just like I was doing with the, the classes. Um, and then there are other things you can add elements, um, your own photos if you want, um, borders, that kind of thing. So anyway, as you can see, it's real easy to use. You just get in there and just click on these things and you're able to add. They even have like templates for other things like if I wanted that font instead with the lines, I can just bring that over like that and it would be very easy. So that's Canva. Um, Timeline JS. This is a more complicated tool, but it's a fun tool. It allows you to incorporate audio, video, text, and links, and um, in sharing of your timeline. So you can do a timeline for a sequence of events. So, for example, when Mount Lassen celebrated what its 100th anniversary since we exploded in, so we did a timeline of those events leading up to that time. Um, we did a timeline of um, Sonny Stubeck's career when he retired. Um, as a coach at Shasta College. So I have an example here. Um, oh, this is the Mount Lassen story. So get a report, write a story. She had a number of photos she was able to get from archives. And at the very bottom, hopefully it'll pop in right away, but um, let's see, it's a long story. <laughs> All right, you see this text? And if you hover over, it allows you, so here's the timeline. It, gives, it allows you to do date and time, and that appears here. 
So you can include photos like we just did. You can just have standard text. So this could be where you're writing. Um, you can also incorporate, as I said, video and audio. But it takes you through a timeline of events. So it's really cool. Um, they make it easy for you. It was created by the Knight Foundation. They make it easy in terms of, I don't know Excel spreadsheets that well, and it's in an Excel spreadsheet, but they give you a template. So you can just write over what they have. So they'll show you an example, like if you're um, inputting text, this is where it goes. If you're inputting audio, it goes in this slide. The, it's a template you're going to work off of, but it's, it's really cool, and then it gives you an embed code. So um, something you might want to check out that you can incorporate to help tell stories in your community. OK, New Hive is another cool tool. It was an emerging tool a couple years ago. I got in when it was in beta. And um, basically, it's a blank canvas that allows you to create broadcasts, which include audio, video, text, photos, graphics, and more. Um, it's also a social net, uh, media networking site, so you can love them. You, know, you can comment. You can rebroadcast them. They're embeddable on blogs and websites, and you can share the link um, to what you create on your social platforms. So I'll give you an example of my channel. So there's a little, you know, it's a little profile because it is a social media site. So this is what, I just created some maps here for the Special Olympics run when it came through town. That's not as exciting, but um, here I was experimenting with, um, you know, 530 Media Project promotional stuff. So again, it's a blank canvas. I can upload photos and that kind of thing. Let's see. This is the best one I did. So I did this when I was at a paper in a um, uh, suburb of Detroit. And they had their car show coming up. So I included over here, you can see text to the left. Um, it's a little story there. Put a headline on it. I uploaded some photos of this car. And then I incorporated this video. It's a YouTube video that the reporter shot. So you can play it right in there. Hi, I'm Tony Villegas from Lincoln Park. This is my 1956 Chevy 210 sedan. It's a postcard. I ended up purchasing it from my father-in-law, Joe. So you can incorporate audio as well if you wanted to do that. But it's like, like I said, a blank canvas where you can tell a story and then you can put that on your blog if you want. It's a nice visual presentation. Blogging platforms, I kind of covered this in the beginning. So WordPress, um, Blogger, and Tumblr. Tumblr is a younger audience, so again, depending on the demographic you're trying to reach. Um, I do have some examples, let's see. I can't remember what they are, but oh, this is when I worked in the Media Lab um, in Michigan. This was my um, Media Lab blog. So this is a WordPress site, and um, you can do, choose different themes. That's how your content will be presented. It's got a different look to it. I don't know why that's upside down. But um, let's see. What else do I have here? Here's an example for Blogger. This is a reporter in Michigan who has a blog about uh, suicide prevention. This is on uh, Blogspot or Blogger. Same thing. But again, you can choose different themes. Oh, here you see on the right-hand side, she has, um, looks like her Twitter feed coming in. You can do that. Oh, actually, that's a Rebel Mouse feed. I'm going to cover Rebel Mouse in a minute. So this, will, uh, this is a, a Rebel Mouse feed where she's curating um, tweets on the topic that she's covering. You can also bring in your Twitter feed, Instagram feed, that kind of thing. You can have um, RSS feeds on here as well. Um, here you can show off total page views. And your latest headlines. This is a, so this is you can do that on WordPress as well. Sleeve tabs. Oh, it's a lot. Okay. There we go. Now I can see it again. All right. Um. So, oh, and then Tumblr. I think this is my Tumblr, yeah. I don't do much on it. I just got on it just to see what it was like. So um, you can re, what do they call it? Like sort of rebroadcast someone else's on here. So I did that with Mark Beecham's blog post. I just reposted it to mine. Um, this is a repost here. This is just some photos. Trip to Rhode Island. My own 
Public Health of Michigan. Um, this is when I came here to interview, went to the airport. So anyway, you can pick out a different theme. It just depends on what site you want to be on. I, I recommend um, WordPress, but bloggers just as good. And then I will link to some um, a presentation that I did just recently on Blogging 101. It'll walk you through the process of blogging and the bells and whistles that you can add to your blog. And then I've also linked to the 10 free blogging platforms, which I just found online. Okay, we kind of went through WordPress already. So basically, on a blog, you can post um, articles, audio streams, or audio casts, same thing. Uh, video, you can share photo galleries and slideshows, and display curated content using Rebel Moss or Storify. And let's see. Oh, I have a little note on here that the Record Searchlight is seeking blogging partners, and this link will take you to more information. But if you're interested, um, we have blogging partnerships. We don't pay anyone for their blog, but they have a built-in audience already. They're featured on our homepage, and then I help promote them. So it's something to think about. We just added the YMCA, uh, blog from the YMCA, um, one of my regulars to my workshops. Um, he started a blog as well um, on his his time with the California Conservation Corps. And um, mm -hmm. oh yeah, Jerry has one too, and uh, fire safety and that kind of thing. All right, uh, Storify. This is a popular platform um, as well. I'll show you, it's pretty cool. Um, you can curate tweets, Facebook posts, Instagram posts, Google Plus, YouTube videos, Flickr photos. You can embed a URL and more. Um, and what you do is you write around these posts to tell a story. So here's an example, uh, Shasta students react to a shooting. So this was breaking news and um, I wanted to curate some of what our, the audience was saying and the community, what the community was saying about this incident. So I wrote this sort of paragraph here about it and then I curated what was out there on social media. So Clay Duda was a reporter on that. I shared his link to his story I wrote some more information around it. I linked to another story. Um, here's what people in the community were saying. I was able to bring in their tweets. So basically, um, on your dashboard, there's just going to be a little dashboard to the side, and then it will search Twitter based on a hashtag or just search terms. So I think I, I searched Shasta College shooting, and a number of posts came up, and then I just drag and drop them over. That's all you do, and then you can you just click here, and a text box will come up, and you can write around it. So um, I have one other example here. Oh, earthquake hits ready. So again, and you want to do this right away while it, it's, it's hot and it's breaking news. So I, I jumped on this right away. You can see my views, almost over 24,000 views on this. So there's a big audience. And I just shared it on my social, but I'm sure it mostly um, was popular on this platform itself. It's, pretty big. it's a pretty popular platform. So again, I just put a headline on it, some text text, I brought in what people were saying about the earthquake, told a story around it, added some text. This map was there on Twitter, I was able to incorporate that. Um, and again, what people were saying, so. Any questions about Storify? Okay. I would encourage you to just go to Storify, I've got a link to it, um, set up an account through your, either log into Facebook or Twitter or just, you know, set up your email. But, and then just explore. It's, all these tools are very intuitive. And if you're not clear on it, go to YouTube and, and type in tutorial for Storify, and you'll get a tutorial on it. And then if, if you want, I'll teach it as well. Just write it on the, work, the um, handout I gave you that you like the Storify, uh, class on Storify. Really is pretty easy, though. OK, Rebel Mouse is one of my favorite tools. Um, I've taught this in, uh, at our, one of our workshops before. So they actually have. Um, they limited what you can do for free, but it's still, it's a good tool. So um, I'm not sure, I, hopefully I've corrected what they're not offering for free anymore. So um, let me go through this here. So it curates tweets and retweets. It um, to your Facebook pages. So it has to be your Facebook page in order for you to bring in the Facebook page content. So for example, um, I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions with people as well, and I had someone come in, and she has a blog and a Facebook page um, associated with, it's called The Vegan Way of Life. So we created a Rebel Mouse page called The Vegan Way of Life, and she brings on, we've told Rebel Mouse, anytime she posts to the Facebook page for Vegan Way, Way of Life, it comes into the Rebel Mouse page. 
and same with her tweets and everything else. And that way, it's one spot to find all social media related to her topic, the vegan way of life. But she can also curate on that topic and bring in YouTube videos and other things that she wants to incorporate. So I'll show you some examples. Um, so it can serve uh, a couple purposes. So one could be your own personal social front page. So if you're like me and you're on several um, social media, um, okay, you have several social media accounts, you're on many platforms, you can aggregate aggregate them all into one site. So you don't have to go to LinkedIn to look for me or Instagram or Tumblr or Facebook and Twitter. You don't have to follow me all over the place. It's all on Rubble Bows and have it feeding into one site. But you can also do it on a topic. So for example, the record searchlight, I created this for the record searchlight. Uh, it's called MH Lessons for Mental Health Lessons. So I pinned this at the top as an explainer. Welcome to the searchlight's curation site of mental health news. And we did this after Lloyd Pendleton came to town to talk about mental health. And then I told it, I told Rebel Mouse in, in the settings to automatically bring in all these mental health um, news articles, Pinterest posts, anything to do with the topic. So the site is infinite. It goes on forever, and it's in real time unless you freeze posts. So I have frozen some posts. So those are the most important posts. Like I think, like for example, this main one is some questions that came from the audience that night, so I froze that here. But if you keep it all fluid, it'll look fresh all the time based on that topic. Does it froze it? Oh, it stays in its place rather than normally it's pushed down. Yeah, so there's actually like over here, if I was logged in, you see how it's like a repost? That's a social function, but if I was logged in, it will have something that says freeze. And that you can freeze it for one hour, six hours, or until you tell it to, to remove it. So, um, so it'll if stay you wanted something always at the top, you yeah. can freeze it. Okay. Yeah. Right, and that's what we've done here on some of our posts. So just to show you another example, um, Master Gardeners. So I was doing a presentation for the Master Gardeners Club, and I wanted to show them how easy it is. That here I'm just bringing in their RSS feed. Um, but if they were on social, um, actually, they've added Facebook recently, so, but at the time they weren't on social, but I can have it bring in its Twitter feed and, and the Facebook feeds and all that. But right now, it's just curating its RSS feed from a blog. Um, so as you see, it kind of has like this news format to it. It's a cool tool to, to incorporate. I incorporate it on the 530 Media Project blog. Let me go to that real quick. If you haven't seen that yet, you just go to reading.com and then go under Opinion blogs, and then 530 Media Projects right at the top. So let me go there just to show you. And this is where I post all our presentations as well. So you feel free if you've missed any presentations in the past to go here and look at them. But click on the blog here. And then what I've done here at my blog, I've got some tabs. And one tab is my Rebel Mouse page. So if I click on, click on that, this is where I'm curating all sort of local news. So um, these are posts from our reporters that are bringing in their posts from Twitter. Click on load more. So this is basically a rubble mouse page. Um, oh, that's what it's bringing in. Okay, I forgot when I left the newsroom today, I told my assistant to post all the cool April nights photos to Pinterest. So it's got a lot of them at the top right now because it's in real time. That's why you're seeing all that. Um, so, so anyway. things automatically come in, or you have, yeah, okay. yeah. You set up the feed. If something comes in that you don't want to share, is there a way to delete it? Yeah, you can easily delete it. It's the same function as when you freeze. There's a whole bar that comes up. You can freeze, delete, edit, all kinds of things. You can also choose to have everything go to a folder, and you approve it before it actually goes. Or you can just, you know, let it go, and then if someone complains or if you notice something, you can delete it easily. That's kind of how we run running.com is, you know, you kind of count on the audience to help you out there and let you know if there's something inappropriate. But um, you can also set it up so you review everything before it posts. <laughs> um, where was I here? And then if you do searches, I mean, does this come up? How do, how do people find these rebel posts? Well, you're, you're um, embedding it on your blog or website. So you saw just a second ago how it was a page here on this blog. So let me show you another example. I set one up for the Women's Fund. So I do their blog for them as well. I set this blog up for them two months ago. 
And um, here on the left-hand side, you see our social face. That is a page on a blog, okay, where I embedded the Rebel Mouse um, embed. So see, it says Rebel Mouse here. So here I'm curating all of the women's fun social posts. So it's bringing in their Instagram, their Twitter, their Facebook. Um, some are duplicates because we're sharing the same content on, on all of those different um, networks. But if I want to be picky about it, go, oh, this looks really bad, I could go in there. If I, if I was logged in right now and I could delete, like, oh, this is a duplicate post, let me delete one of them. I can clean it up if I want. So as you see, it's a it's a page on their blog that keeps it fresh. So if you're blogging and you don't um, have time to blog, like we recommend three times a week for blogging, just keep it fresh and your audience interested and interacting. So if you're unable to do that, this is a great alternative because it is constantly bringing in new content to your blog. And it, like the Master Gardeners, or you saw these different articles coming in. So if you have a particular topic, like she, the woman I spoke about earlier had the vegan way of life. We, curated vegan content that was coming in all the time. So she didn't have to post stuff all the time. It was automatically bringing it in. So if you're interested in me teaching another Rebel Mouse page and like helping you set up a page, write it down on the, the flyer I have and I can set that up easily. But um, it's also a, it's a very intuitive tool. You can get in there and play around and try to figure it out. That's how I figured out all these tools. I just get in there and uh, click on stuff. All right, um, we're getting toward the end of the presentation. Um, here I'm just um, talking about um, the web blog handout or handbook. So um, um, some tips here, publish as facts only um, that which you believe to be true. These are some tips from that, from that blog. Um, if your statement is um, speculation, say so. If material exists online, link to it. That's best practice when you refer reference it. Um, publicly correct any misinformation. Only add to an entry, do not rewrite or delete. And then state any corrections at the end. Disclose any conflict of interest and note questionable and biased sources. So I link to it, you can read more in the blogger code of ethics, that's where this came from. And then I just have a short quiz. So um, see if you guys are on your toes. Uh, name some of the tools of a citizen journalist. Smartphone, yeah. Laptop. Tablet. Tablet. Yeah. Okay. Um, list some publishing platforms. Rebel Mouse. Rebel Mouse, yeah. Facebook. Facebook. Instagram. Mm -hmm. Instagram. Yeah. Storify would be one, yeah. Um, which tools can you use to live stream video? Periscope. Periscope, <laughs> yeah. Ustream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Facebook now, that's brand new. Um, which tools can be used to curate content? Rebel Mouse. Rebel Mouse, yeah. Storify. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, what can you do with Google Voice? Yep, capture audio, download them, incorporate them in a sound slideshow. Which tools can you use to live blog? You can blog on WordPress. Um, yeah, publish it right away. Um, Rebel Mouse will let you live blog and um, um, Scribble Live. Uh, let's see, which tools do you think you'll use the most? Facebook. <laughs> Come on, you guys are already there. What new tool? <laughs> Was there anything that sounded really interesting to you that you're going to want to check out? Canva. Canva, yeah, yeah. Rebel Mouse, yes. I probably have like eight Rebel Mouse pages. <laughs> Michelle, I, I don't know how you keep track of all this for yourself because you have so many things. I think because I just have fun with it. So, yeah. yeah I just do it morning, day, night. All right. Um, and then, any questions about uh, citizen journalism and publishing?
So really, like, if you're worried about you want to start a blog and you want people to see it, how are they going to see it? The key is social media. So you got to get it out on social media, share it on all your channels. So that's why you have to be on social media. So yeah, you would write a blog post. For example, for the Women's Fund, um, I'm on their community engagement committee. So I write a blog post. Once I do that, I share it on the Facebook page, I share it on their Twitter, I share it on their Instagram. <coughs> you have to be on all those places so you can reach audience on different platforms. So that's the key to getting the word out. And then asking your friends to share it too. So when you've got something like the, the, the mouse one, or the Rebel Mouse? Yeah, Rebel Mouse. How, how does you go out and find all those things to bring it in? Okay, um, when you set up an account and log in, it, um, you could tell it. You, just, you give it a list of content sources. So for example, a hashtag. So when we did the Merle Haggard one, um, like I said, we used hashtag Merle Haggard memories. So there's a, an area where you just type that in the hashtag. Um, if there's an RSS feed, if there's an area to enter the RSS feed. So for example, if you just have a blog about science and technology, and you want to create a Rebel Mouse page that curates all science and technology articles from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, blah, blah, blah. Um, as long as they have RSS feed available for science and technology, you can incorporate it. You would just go to their website, you would look for RSS feeds, you would find it, you click on it, at the top where the URL is, is what you want to copy, and you paste it into your content sources for Rebel Mouse. So, I know. It's really, you probably, Write down that you want a rebel mouse. <laughs> rebel mouse works you have to specify where you want it to Yeah, you have to direct it. Tell it where to get it. But once you do that, it's all automated. You're, you're gone. You don't need to mess with it. Except for maybe to check on it and make sure any, you know, some rogue post didn't get in there. I have just kind of a basic question. When all of these sites say, do you want to log in through your Facebook account mm -hmm. or otherwise, what does that do? Uh, it just it makes your life easier. <laughs> it's easier to log in doing that. It asks for all these permissions, which sca which scares a lot of people. But I always let it and never had a problem. I never had it posting something or doing anything. It does what you want it to do. So with Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So but I never had a problem. I know a lot of people are sort of you know they're, they're not trusting, but they wouldn't be in business if they were doing you know crazy stuff with your access. So you would build like Rebel Mouse or Super Tank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, to set up an account, you can. Yeah. So it'll say, you know, to set up an account, you want to just go through Facebook, Twitter. It gives you these easy options where you would just press yes, and then voila, you're there. Rather than entering your email address, setting up a password, and going through that process. It's just easier. It's convenient. I would now that. What do you mean, like? Well, if I signed up through Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, it makes the sign up process easier, mm -hmm. but I do know if it linked back to my Facebook page, where people would be able to see it. Um, no, it wouldn't, unless you did that and gave it, like, you have to have that capability, first of all, and then you have to give it permission to do that. And then on your phone, you can always change things, so if you no longer want that, you can switch it over on your phone, too. Like, there's a button. No longer give access. So then, if you use some private key, so let's say you want to do an access, or you want to keep the rebel name public to your site. You can do that, yeah. Because <clears throat> like everyone is up for grabs. If some, anybody can use some social to copy anything they want, so you can get away with it. You know, kind of like the lady that was up there, I wouldn't want to be sitting like that. And I do know public events are bad. You know, that they're public events. And so, you kind of got to go in. But a lot of times, yeah, when you're out in public, you're scared to go. That you really can get into anybody's mm -hmm. phone today or mm -hmm. anyone else. Mm -hmm. And so, just keep it simple. Yeah, well, I don't know. In the end, what harm? I mean, yeah. it'd be very rare to be, you know, maybe trip and fell, and then it's all over, like, it's on TNT. <laughs> it's like, so it's so rare. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's I would have liked to have a lot of video do-overs in my career. <laughs> <laughs> you survived, right? Um, yeah, we want it shorter, 500 or less is really preferred, I, I think 600 was the max, but, um, yeah, you, 
want to be brief, unless you're writing some feature story, but I mean, people's attention span, it's all about online now, right? And your attention span on mobile is very short. Like we do videos, like you want 30 second, 60 second videos. They're not gonna sit there and read like a 1,000, 2,000 word manifesto. You wanna keep it brief. So just stick to what I said with the who, what, where, what, when, and how. And then, you know, some other quotes in there, that kind of thing, but keep it as brief as possible. That's the key to getting it in, because if an editor sees this 1,000 word you know, press release, they're like, oh my gosh, I've got to sit here and edit this, and I've got all this other stuff to edit, and all this other stuff to do. It's gonna be a turn off, and they'll probably put it off and put it off. Keep it short, and then if they want to follow up and assign a reporter to it or something, then that's in your best interest. So I guess my best advice is to keep it short, stick to the facts. And you still have the right to your edit, because most of the time, your product and the final outcome will be very different. Mm -hmm. You always edit for uh, spelling and grammar, and that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't edit blogs, so if you're a blogging partner like Jerry is, uh -huh. um, you're, you're independent in that way. So we don't edit it, we don't tell him what to write or anything, he's independent. Um, Unless you know he went off the rails and wrote something crazy, and we got some complaints from readers, <laughs> <laughs> we pretty much leave the bloggers alone. All right. Well, that's it. If everyone could fill this form out, my boss wants to know if people want me to continue doing this, and if so, what kind of workshops? I'd appreciate it. I also gave you some sheets, um, just some tips here from the presentation, some information on sharing your news with the newspaper, how to do that. And then how to, uh, this is more about the 530 Media Project, and it lists some of our upcoming workshops. Can you tell us the link to get that? Oh, it's on here. You can ask for me to send it, ask for me to send it to you, yeah, by providing your email address, or you just go to writing.com, opinion, blogs, and there it is. Okay.
Thank you.